And we are live. Hey everybody, it's um, Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. We're in Montreal. It's Heather Boyd of Heather Boyd Wire, and I'm doing a live stream troubleshooting jewelry designs. I used to do these live streams on my YouTube channel, which is at Heather Boyd Wire. If anyone wants to check out my other videos, and I decided to do them on Facebook now because I was having technical difficulties. So what I do is I'm going to tape the video uh, live stream and then I'm going to edit it to take out the glitches and put it on YouTube. So today I'm going to be troubleshooting some ideas for some different, you know, designs. And I wanted before I flip my screen to show you a couple things I'm working on. So this is a cute little one. So my husband Mark makes these um, little figures and I made like this little bench with the heart and I'm going to personalize it with the couple's names and this is a wedding cake topper and this one here is our classic uh, couple on the tandem bicycle and this one too I personalized and put the names in the front wheel and this one we actually sent one to William and Kate when they got married and we got a thank you letter from the palace which was super cool so Allison's watching hey Allison how are you Great to see you. And and Caleb's watching. Hey, Caleb, how are you? Nice to see you. This is fun doing these videos on Facebook now because more people see it. When they were on YouTube, nobody used to see what I was doing so much. Well, I had a few people that would watch. So these are, guys, these are some really old, old pieces. My very first wire pieces that I made when I was selling on the street. So this was actually before I even met Mark. And Michelle's here from from uh, hello Heather from California in the US awesome hi Michelle so yeah these are very very old pieces that I made in 1989 when I was selling on the streets of Montreal this is like electrical wire this is just like random wire from the uh, hardware store and probably what I did was I bought like old vintage jewelry and then just um, took it apart and made these funny like look at this funny piece with the uh, with the kind of squiggly wires so yeah these are super old pieces this is a piece of cork that I painted and so these were some bracelets that I did and then before those I was doing these which was hey Carrie how are you so this is like a little um, bracelet that I just wound with leather and then wound it around with wire and beads these two I met before I met uh, I made before I met Mark so this is just like my basic wire techniques and this one is funny this I had an old bike that I turned into a sculpture when I was in university and I saved some of the bolts and stuff so I made like a ring out of that so that was super cool so uh yeah I'm gonna be posting like old pictures of my work in my um, Facebook page uh, Heather Boyd Wire because I think it's cool to see all this old stuff and see how things have evolved these are like little unicorn earrings that are super cute so this is typical of what I do now just fun little earrings and stuff so today I want to troubleshoot a design for this ring. So I, I've been working on more rings for YouTube because people really seem to like the ring designs. So this was one I had an idea to use, do a three strand and then make a ring out of that. So as always, I'm just going to play around with it and see what I can do. So here's my 20 gauge wire. And we're going to cut a piece of wire that's, let me just figure out, I'm not exactly sure how big it's going to have to be, but it's going to have to be pretty long. So let me just cut a piece, and it's got to fit around my finger, but it's also got to be braided. So what if I start, sometimes it's good just to measure it so we have a ballpark for the next time. And if I measure it to about, say, 12, like that's, that's probably way too long, but I'm gonna just cut it at 12 inches anyways, because it's always better too long than too short. So let's just do that. And then take another piece that's about half the size. So we'll do six inches there. And so we have our wire, 20 gauge wire. This is artistic copper wire. And I'm gonna take a small-ish bead. I don't need it super, super big. So why don't we get one of these hematite beads because these are really pretty so I'm going to just straighten the wire a little bit and put the hematite bead on here okay we're going to put it on there and we're going to take these wires and fold it in half and so what I want to do is just 
make it a little bit round on the end. So I'll just take a pen, you could use round pliers, and we're just going to kind of wind it around the end. Okay, we'll just go like that. And so it's got like a little round form. And the idea is this is going to fit in there, right? So what we want to do now is take this end and just with your round pliers, we're going to bend it around. So we're just going to take this round pliers, just bend it around a little bit and make sure it's going to close on there. And then we're going to, we could actually, you could actually do this before you put the bead on, but I did it the other way. So we're going to just slip it in there in the middle and we're just going to bend this in. So to close the gap a little bit, we'll just close it up and see if it's going to be, it's a little awkward being able to like work and then kind of look through the iPod as well, but it's okay. We'll figure it out. I've done this so many times before now. So here we go. So this was my idea. And as always with my live streams, I don't guarantee these are going to work because I've never necessarily tried these designs before. So this might have been easier with a 22 gauge wire because it is a little bit stiff. So we want to braid that. That's the idea. We want to take this and braid it because now we have three strands. So if we just pull that one over, let's see if we can do it this way, that way. Braiding is a little bit tricky too if you haven't done it in a while. So we're gonna go like that. So if we just go like that, let's see what we could do. I've got to get a jig. Yeah, jigs are great. Um, we don't really need it for this project. I was just experimenting with holding this in place uh, for the braiding, and but now I'm getting a little bit of a mind fart and forgetting how to braid. So we're gonna just go like that. I think we just go in and in. This is gonna be easier without the jig, I think. And then in. And then this one in, yeah, I think this is how we do it. So we just go in like this. Yeah, this would actually be impossible holding it on the jig. So this is one of these instances of when I had a bright idea that wasn't so bright after all because that's not going to work at all, especially because this wire is quite stiff. So this seems to be much easier to do it this way, but this is not too bad. So we're just going to continue to braid, which is basically just pulling one wire behind the other, like that. And it's a little bit tricky to get it even, but not too bad. So this, I really think you could do this with either the 20 gauge wire or the 24. I wouldn't go any thicker. Although that being said, I did pull out my 18 gauge wire, which is thicker to try to do a bracelet. So that we might or might not do. What I might end, end up doing is a, like a freeform kind of bracelet with the 18 gauge wire because this is really tricky and stiff to do. Now, as in another ring that I did, I think it was last week with the twist, or no, two weeks ago with the twist, it was um, this part I measured to be about two to two and a half inches. So let's measure that where we're at now. We're about, yeah, so you know what? It's probably long enough now so once you've got sort of the length that you want, so we've got the length like this. Oh, getting lots of hearts. Thanks, guys. You guys are awesome. So here we have this part here. Let me move some of this stuff out of the way. So this is your basic kind of uh, shape. And I have to admit, I don't 100% love rings that are done like this because sometimes I'm afraid they're going to make an impression on your finger. But I know they look really cool. So let's just try it. So now we're going to take our ring form and just wind this around. Okay, we'll just wind it around. I think I might have done this a little bit on the long side. So, okay, my idea was to either like attach it in to there which I actually did on one of my previous videos. So when I when I link this up on YouTube, I'm gonna link the previous video so you could see other alternate ways to finish it. But I kinda of like the way this looks flat like that. So what I wanna do now is I think I'm just gonna take these ends and make little spirals with them. So let me just see what I can do with these. Um, and that's where I wasn't sure if I would do one underneath and one below and one over top. So if the ring was like bigger, we could bring one underneath See, because that could be kind of cool to do one underneath and one over. Maybe I'll do that. That might make it a little more balanced. And then, as you can see, this 
this design is like super, uh, it could be super adapted to how you want to do it. So to do the spiral, I find the easiest way is just to get a pen and we're just going to get a pen and hold it and then just wind this around a few times. So we do one like that. Okay. Wind that around and then this one too, we could do it in the same direction or you could do it in a different direction if you want. Sometimes it's a little awkward to get into it, but you could also use round pliers if you want, if you want to, you know, help the spiral out a little bit. This one got a little, a little bit crooked. Okay. And then this one too, we can do the same way. So we can, we can use the round pliers or the, or the, um, the pen. Like sometimes it is a little awkward to get to. So we're going to go around. Okay. So we have our, looks like a bit of a hot mess right now, but we're going to just clip, clip some of these ends. So we'll just clip these ends a little bit here. Okay. And then you can go in and take your round pliers and tighten up the spirals a bit. So now we're going to take the round pliers. I do have a lot of videos on YouTube about how to make spirals and stuff. And I, I find the easiest way to make them is to have a cone shape, be it a, um, a pen or a cone, or even I made a, a, a kind of a fake little cone thing. Oh, you know what I did? I forgot now. I had gone to Michael's to find ideas for cones, like different cone shapes that you could use to make spirals. And when I was in their cake decorating um, department, I saw, you know, like the icing uh, tips from icing guns that are perfect cones. So I actually bought a couple of those and I made like a little jig thing where with a couple of those cones that form uh, that form like a double spiral for an earring design. So that was really cool. So I used your icing tip idea last night. That's awesome. How cool, Susan. What did, what did you make? That is, so, I'm so happy to hear that. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's fun finding like little gadgets and things that work. So guys, here's like so far the spirals. But now what you'll want to do is tighten them up a little bit with, uh, with your flat pliers. So you're going to go in and just tighten it up a little bit. Okay, and you'll see once we put it back on the ring form, we're going to be able to fix it up a bit. So here we go like that. Elf ears. Oh, so cool. Yeah, send me a photo, definitely. Uh, Susan, are you also in the Wire Art and Jewelry Makers Club because I lose track of who's in that group or not. You must be. So could you could you post it in the group? That would be that would be really cool that if, for everybody to see. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Post it in the group. That would be amazing. Fantastic. Some people um I lose track of their YouTube names and and usernames on on Facebook because some people use different usernames. You are. Yes. Of course you are. So there we go. So there we go. So now we've just kind of pushed all this all together and then you could push it in a little more if you want. So then, and like I said, you can do this almost any way, like put the, you could clip off one of the rings, the spirals, you could do them different ways. So that's kind of funky. I kind of like it. And it's got like this, it's a little big, ended up being a little big. So maybe the, the maybe the braided area you'll want to make a little shorter and that's going to depend on the size of your finger. So that is one idea. Turned out not too bad, eh? Yeah. So like the concept was there of just having like the double wire and then a single wire and then you have three strands that you can braid. So let's try it a little bit bigger for a bracelet. So I'm not sure how well that's going to work. This would be, this bracelet would be sort of the same concept of something a little bit like that. Like this one's much more rough and, and, uh, I really like that one. That one I made a long time ago. So that one's a lot more kind of uh, loose. And definitely that's the lovely thing about this artistic wire is you can do like really lovely loose designs with it, which is great. So I think I'm going to make this quite a bit longer. If it's going to be a bracelet, let's make it hmm, maybe even 20, I think at least 20 inches long maybe 24. So I'm going to make it kind of twice as long as what we did for the ring and hopefully that will be long enough. So if we do 24 and 12, we'll see how that's going to go. So I think what I'm going to go ahead and do is just make my loop on the 
12 inch one. So we'll just go ahead and do our loop on this one so it's closed. Okay, there we go. We're just going to make a nice closed loop. And then we'll take our 24 gauge one and do the same thing where we kind of fold it in half. And let's go ahead and just with our round form, we're going to fold it in half. Okay, and straighten the wires out. Sorry, I have to go off screen for a little bit. Straighten the wires out as much as you can. And then because we've already done our little loopy thing, let's just go ahead and stick it on the end. Okay, we're going to stick it on the end like that. Okay, we've got that. And stick that all the way up. And let's use a bigger bead. Probably, well, all I have handy are eight millimeter beads. So I'm gonna get an eight millimeter bead. Uh, maybe I'll use one of the miracle beads. I love those miracle beads. So I'll get one of these red miracle beads and stick it on the wire. And let's just see where we're gonna go with this. So if, oh, I stuck it on the wrong wire. That was not too smart. This is the part I edit out of the video for YouTube, ha ha. So there we go to stick it on this wire and pull it up here. And then we have the, we're in the same situation where we have these three, uh, these three wires. So I think I'm going to still try to braid it just because that was sort of my original idea. And if it doesn't um, work, I can do something more freeform. But let's just go ahead and if we go like this, so we have this one. But let's try to make like a loose, a looser, a looser braid maybe. So if we bring that to the front, okay, how are we braiding now? And we're gonna bring this one to the front. Or it might not be that loose, we're gonna see. And then this one, this one. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna just try it like this and see, because I mean, it would be easy to do something super freeform, but uh, I'm going to try to do something a little bit more um, kind of straight. So we're going to see. So we're going to just go around like this, pull it around. And for a bracelet, I think it probably has to be about seven to eight inches, something like that. I'm not 100% sure, but something like that. Uh, seven or eight. I have really tiny wrists, so it is really going to depend on the size of your wrists. And we're just going to go around like this. I generally don't wear bracelets. Uh, I used to wear a lot of bracelets. Like back in the day when I was selling on the street, I had like probably, you know, halfway up my arm with those little, you know, friendship bracelets and stuff that were really popular back in the day. A lot of people were selling those on the street and stuff. So I used to have tons of those bracelets and I'm surprised my arm didn't go moldy because <laughs> I think I wore them all the time, which was a little crazy. So we're just going to keep braiding this. Yeah, I think this is good that I'm going to do the braid thing with this because if I was going to do something really loose, I would probably need more wire. So this should work out fine for this. And then if I want to do a loose one, but the fun thing about the loose one too is you can add wires as you go, which is really interesting. Okay, so let's go ahead. It got a little looser at the end. Uh, I'm gonna measure it to, so yeah, it is about seven inches. So maybe I'll just do one more. Okay, so now what we're going to have to do is actually like kind of attach these ends. Otherwise, I think they're going to, um, they're going to come apart. So why don't I go ahead? I'm going to bring this one up. If we twist it around, okay, just to hold it in place, because otherwise, like I said, they are going to come loose. So we're just going to twist these in place, okay? And yeah, it's getting a little, it's got a little squished together there, but we're going to see. So the idea would be now is you want to mold it somehow. I haven't made a bracelet like this for a long time, so I'm not exactly sure where I'm going with this, but this is sort of the idea. And what I love about doing these designs is people in the group ultimately come up with their own ideas based on these as a starting point. So I'm sure everybody, you know, people are in, in the group are gonna make some pretty amazing things. Now this did end up being a little bit too big, 
But what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to form the spirals and then I'll decide after that what I'm going to do with it. So now I'm going to actually use my ring form for the spirals because these are bigger. Okay, we're going to go around like that. I have one end that's a little longer than the other. So we're just going to go ahead and do that one. That one might be a big spiral. And then this one here. Now I do these spirals a lot, especially when uh, I do like dragonflies and butterflies and stuff, which is really, really fun. So here's our spirals. And then of course, like before, we're going to tighten them up. So let's get, let's get this one and turn it in a little bit. Okay, we're going to just turn this one in a little bit like that and pull it around. Okay, we're just going to pull it right around. Okay, and we'll just start all of them like that where we just take the end with our round pliers and we're just going to pull it in a little bit. Okay, pull it in and around and then we'll tighten them up after. So we'll do one more and you could probably even do like multiple wires too if you wanted. The 18 gauge is pretty stiff and uh, I think another time I would try one more little freeform. I think I might have already done a live stream before where I did the freeform bracelet. <clears throat> Excuse me. And now I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure I did. So if I did, when I put this one on YouTube, I'll link that one up as well. Uh, some of the some of the past ones that I've done. So that one and then some of the ring ones too. So there we go. So we're going to just push that one in a little bit. And we're going to just push that in a little bit. So we have Tracy and Nicholas watching. Awesome. Hey guys, how are you guys doing? So we're just going to go in like this. And now because I see it's a little bit big, um, for me anyways. Yay, go Heather. Awesome. Hey Nicholas, are you at work? Are you on your lunch break? Oh no, actually it's earlier there. You're in California, so it's a lot earlier there. Maybe you're having your breakfast. I've lost track of time. So you see, like normally we could have put it in like that, but because it's a little big for me, I'm just going to push it in a little more. And then the idea is we want to keep this open because if you put it on as a bracelet, you want to be able to open it up. It's not going to slide over your hand too well. So let me just see if I can kind of loop it on. And for the bracelet, you're definitely going to want to use at least a 20 or 18 gauge wire because otherwise it's going to be way too loose. So this is the idea. We can go in like that and it's sort of interesting. I think there's a lot of potential there. Uh, the idea is like to have a braided thing and then like a little bit like that. And you could even like one of the designs I did for a ring before had almost like even a little button type uh, thing going on. So what I did with that, just because I don't mind like uh, messing around with this. So something that I did in one of the previous rings was I just bent this up. It didn't quite look like that though so it's not quite the same idea but if you bend it up a little bit and then if you did sort of a, I'm just trying to see if how I could do this. If we're just going to bend it around a little bit. This is where I just play around with the design and see what happens and if it doesn't work well then you can just stop at the previous stage that I that I worked on so Carrie says hang charms yes that would be super cool and I think that's the one I did on the live stream before I did one similar to like this loose one and I dangled little charms off it and it was super cute I'll have to see if I have it in my collection of stuff because um yeah it was a really cute design and so this one I'm going to just like if we just put it kind of in there let me just see. Yeah, you'll, you'll see on the ring design that I did before that uh, how you can do this in a way that you can actually latch that in because sometimes with bracelets, we're always afraid of like losing them. But see how if you do that, it kind of clips in, right? So then you're not afraid to lose it. So there's so much potential with this design that you can do. Uh, let me try to actually like latch it on my own arm to see if it'll work. Uh, we'll just stick it on there to see. Um, of course, I'm right-handed, so this is tricky. But yeah, so this way it kind of latches on and actually sticks on. So that's kind of cool. So let me just take that off, and I'm going to show you guys what we made today. 
because I think we're, you know, pretty on schedule, we're, we did like half an hour, which is great. Perfect. So we did this one and then we did the ring, which is super cool. Thanks They're so much for watching. That was really fun. And, uh, oh, and Jill's on. Hey, Jill, how are you? Nice to see you. So yeah, so I'm going to edit this video a little bit and I'm going to post it on YouTube. So, so if you guys want to rewatch it and I'll keep the, um, I'll keep this one on Facebook as well. So if you want to go back and have a look and if you make any of these designs, be sure to share them in the wire art and jewelry makers club on Facebook and uh, we'll see you next week. I'm not always sure hundred percent sure of the time, but I do my live streams on Wednesdays. So we'll definitely see you uh, next week and have a wonderful day. Okay, bye guys.